Hello, this is Gail Palmer from the Living Elements Clinic near Chichester on the south coast. Today I wanted to talk to you about ways that you can help people improve their coordination. So that is how you are able to move in relationship to space or in relationship to other objects. It's a fundamental principle of being human. It takes a long time for us to learn as ch children and as you get older it often is one of the first functions that begins to decrease in either accuracy or function at all and it's crucially important to have good coordination to stop you falling over uh, to give you a clear idea of where you are in space so I thought I'd do this short video to give you some ideas of exercises that you can do to help yourself and your family around you as well. So I'm outside today, it's a beautiful day and uh, one of the advantages of that is that you can listen to the world around you, you can feel the air moving as the wind and breeze is about you and those things are sometimes quite challenging for people because uh, as you get older sometimes your ability to take in all of your environment gets reduced. So one of the things about increasing your coordination is that it improves your nerve memory. Over time, if we don't use a function, it's not necessarily that we lose it, but we lose the finesse of it, or we lose some of the concentration that we had in order to do it efficiently and effectively and safely. So a bit like riding a bicycle, where it takes a long time for us to get that sense of balance where you're able to shift your weight bearing and what have you without falling over. Um, coordination is a practiced uh, phenomena, okay? So we need to keep practicing, hence the importance of this video. So there are some very simple exercises that you can do and I'm gonna demonstrate some of those for you now. So one of the first things that you can do is to get a ball. I've got two types of ball here. This is on my old lacrosse ball. It's heavy, but it's good for rolling on a table and for uh, because it's got that extra weight. This is an old tennis ball. So far I've managed to steal it from the dog. Um, obviously it bounces, it's lighter. It's more difficult to control in some ways, but it has a different texture and different surface. And that's also useful for your coordination. So you can do simple things, obviously like throwing and catching. If you've got someone to do this with, fantastic, because they can throw it in different ways. If you haven't, you can do it for yourself. You can drop it on the floor, make it fun, make yourself have to move. Or you can do it up against a wall, for instance, if you're inside. I'm going to go back to the heavier ball now. So this, it's a lacrosse ball, so it does bounce, but not in the same way that the other does. But one of the other things that you can do with a heavier ball is to manipulate it between your hands, around your hands, and start to build up quite complex movements use your fingertips, use the back of your hand and all of that helps to bring and increase your sensory awareness. As you can see I'm mainly looking at the camera but you can do this with your eyes open and you can watch it all the time or you can do it with your eyes closed. Another good way of doing this is one of these knobbly balls. They come in different sizes. It's a large one, medium one, and the diddly one. And the advantage of this is you have a different texture and a, a more um, grippiness to it. So if you are getting arthritis in your joints or stiffness, or you're losing sensation in your hands or even your feet, because you can use these on your feet as well, um, that gives you a little bit more surface area to hold on to. Um, but again, they're a great way of stimulating 
your nervous system. You can roll it up and down your arm, around your arm. With the smaller one, you can get them almost to go between your fingers. And it's a fantastic way of stimulating your system. And it takes a bit of practice. Hello, we're gonna have a bit of help from the dog. Hello, Echo. Thank you for coming to join us, sweetie. Now, can you go and sit down somewhere else? No, okay. <laughs> Obviously you can juggle, catch with these as well. I know you, I know what you want, but you're not having them. <laughs> um, so you can do your catching one-handed, you can do it two-handed, uh, whatever works. I know when my father had uh, his stroke, he was getting more difficult to uh, manipulate um, balls and what have you and it and part of the coordination is your eye to hand coordination is so vital uh, to keep everything healthy let's move your tail out the way sweetie thank you very much um, and so we would start off just rolling a ball along a table to him so it was like catch um, and then we could start once he'd got that for a couple of minutes we could then start uh, actually throwing the ball to him as well So the other uh, next step up is to get your feet moving, okay? Really important for your coordination. I'm gonna see, oh, that's not gonna work. It might, it might not, it might, it might not, we'll see. So uh, for this, let's just move this a little bit further away. Sorry, slight, slight reorganization. You're gonna go do toe taps. So you're gonna take foot forward, out to the side and back. Foot forward to the middle side back and the dog's gonna help too that's fabulous okay well let's do it with the dog foot forward side back <laughs> that's not great help well, thank you echo forward side back forward side back okay so that helps to give you some stability no you'll know <laughs> I know you're going to move all my props. I know what you like. Um, that will help to improve your uh, coordination and your balance as well, because the other thing about coordination is you lose your balance. Come on, leave the bottom. Thank you very much, dog. All right, let's bring that a little bit closer to me there. There we go. Oh dear. Let's try again. Try again. There we go. It's a bit finely balanced. Okay. Clapping games, really good fun. Are you gonna join in clapping games? You're not, you're not. Okay, you know those old games that you used to play when you were a child at school? Yeah? Do it with a partner, do it against a wall. It doesn't matter. It definitely works more with a partner. You can do high, up, down, Reverse them. That's quite an interesting one if you're a bit stiff in the shoulders. Um, anything like that, gradually increase the complexity. So just start off with playing capping games and gradually improve and increase the complexity of them. Yeah, fabulous fun and easy to do. Don't need any other equipment. Okay, and, uh, and then ones that are uh, you do need to have a partner for is to play Simon Says. Can you remember that game? Sorry, my camera is now wafting around in the breeze. It's hilarious. It's definitely not going to stay still. So Simon Says, touch your head. Simon Says, touch your left shoulder. Simon Says, touch your right shoulder. Simon Says, touch your knee. Touch your head. Did you get it? Did you get it? So that is part of your ear eye, brain, hand coordination. Again, it's the ability to listen to an instruction, remember it, and then follow it through. So although it's a simple childhood game, if you have various stages of dementia, sometimes Parkinson's, that's quite difficult to do and coordinate. So practice. The more practice you can do, the more fun it is, the better results are. So have fun, enjoy yourself, give it a go. Take care for now. That's Gail Palmer from the Living Elements Clinic. 
the osteopath where your health is my priority. Place your healing in my hands. Take care.